Right now, as you watch this, the ground beneath Pozzuoli, Italy is moving. Not slowly, not gently, but violently enough that families can feel their floors heating up like stovetops. Children sleep with fans pointed at their beds because the walls radiate so much heat, they can barely rest. And just one minute ago, scientists at Italy's National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology recorded yet another tremor from the Campi Flegre caldera, a hidden supervolcano sprawling beneath half a million people. This isn't a warning about what might happen someday. This is happening now. And it's accelerating. In March 2025, a magnitude 4.4 earthquake ripped through Pozuole at 1 in the morning, jolting people awake, cracking walls, and sending families running into the street. Then, just three months later in June, an even stronger 4.6 magnitude quake struck, the most powerful earthquake ever instrumentally recorded at Campi Flegre. Buildings that survived the first quake didn't survive the second. Entire apartment blocks were evacuated. Tens of families still can't return home because the damage is too severe. But here's what makes this truly terrifying. Those earthquakes aren't random. They're symptoms of something far more dangerous building beneath the surface. Since 2005, the ground in Pozzuoli has risen 148 centimeters, nearly five feet. That's not a measurement taken over centuries. That's two decades. And in 2024 alone, the uplift surged by 29.5 centimeters almost a full foot in just 12 months. Giovanni Macedonio, the director of the National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology in Naples, oversees the monitoring of this seismic giant. He doesn't mince words when describing the threat. The two most recent earthquakes, he says, are the strongest they've ever seen, not in recent years, ever. In centuries of recorded history at this location, nothing compares to what's happening right now. And this isn't just about shaking ground. Walk through certain neighborhoods near the Solfatara crater, and you'll see buildings that look like they've been transported to another planet. Walls coated in thick yellow and white mineral crusts, sulfur and silica deposits inches thick, fused by volcanic heat. Floors warped beyond recognition. In one abandoned apartment block near the Pizzirelli fumarole vents, the heat inside is so intense that paint has blistered off the walls, and the air itself hangs heavy with the sharp, choking smell of sulfur. Residents still living nearby describe a reality most of us can't imagine. One woman told local reporters that if you put your hand on the wall at night, it isn't just warm, it's terribly hot. Another family said they check their living room floor every morning for new cracks New yellow streaks creeping up from the baseboards. They've spent thousands of euros on heat-resistant paint. On ventilation systems on ceiling fissures that always reopen. Insurance companies refuse to cover the damage, citing volcanic exclusion clauses. And who would buy their homes now? Property values have collapsed. This is the reality for over 500,000 people living inside what authorities now call the Red Zone, an eight-mile-wide crater left by an eruption 39,000 years ago that buried most of Europe in ash. But unlike Vesuvius, the famous volcano to the east that froze Pompeii in time, Campi Flegre doesn't announce itself with a towering cone. There's no smoking peak, no clear warning instead. It sprawls beneath neighborhoods, football fields, ancient Roman ruins, and busy harbors. Most people don't even know they're living inside a caldera. The numbers tell a story that's impossible to ignore. At the Rioni Terra GPS station in the heart of Pozzuoli, scientists have measured a total ground uplift of 148 centimeters since 2005. That's nearly five feet of vertical movement in just two decades. But here's where it gets truly alarming. In 2024 alone, the ground rose 29.5 centimeters, 
almost a full foot in 12 months. And, as of December 2025, the uplift continues at a rate of 25 mm per month, accelerating from the 15 mm per month recorded earlier this year. The Italian National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology, known as ENES, operates a network of 37 GPS stations across the caldera, constantly measuring even the smallest shifts in the Earth. Their data shows the center of maximum deformation sits just offshore from Pozzuoli, right beneath the bay of Pozzuoli. Every week, the ground pulses upward, sometimes by millimeters, sometimes by centimeters. Ancient Roman columns at the Temple of Serapis, once submerged underwater, now stand exposed on dry land. Boats that used to float in the harbor are now stranded in long grass on newly emerged ground. But uplift is just one piece of the puzzle. Between November 24th and November 30th, 2025, EZV recorded 137 earthquakes in the caldera. The strongest hit magnitude 3.3 on November 26th strong enough to shake buildings and wake residents in the middle of the night. Over the past year, thousands of these tremors have rattled the area, most clustering at depths between 2 and 4 kilometers, directly beneath populated neighborhoods. Then, there's the heat. At the PCRLE fumarole field on the northern edge of the Solfatara crater, temperatures have stabilized around 93 degrees Celsius. But at the main fumarole inside Solfatara crater, identified by scientists as the BG vent, temperatures have surged to an average of 173 degrees Celsius. That's 343 degrees Fahrenheit, hot enough to boil water instantly. Carbon dioxide emissions paint an equally troubling picture. The Pisaarelli vents alone release thousands of tons of CO2 daily. Ranking Campi Flegre among the top volcanic carbon dioxide emitters on Earth. Continuous monitoring stations track gas flux around the clock, and the data shows no signs of slowing. In some evacuated buildings near the vents, indoor CO2 concentrations have been measured at over 9,000 parts per million, far above the 1,000 ppm threshold considered safe for prolonged human exposure. At those levels, people experience headaches, dizziness, shortness of breath, and in extreme cases, loss of consciousness. So what's actually happening beneath Pozzuoli? Scientists have pieced together a picture that's both fascinating and deeply unsettling. Deep below the caldera, about eight kilometers down, sits a massive reservoir of molten rock. For years, Magma has been slowly rising from this chamber, not in a sudden explosive burst, but in a gradual upward creep. By 2015, that magma had reached depths of around 6 kilometers. Funjug is na. That's just two and a half miles below the streets where children walk to school, where families sit down for dinner, where life continues as if the ground weren't literally being pushed upward from below. But magma movement alone doesn't explain everything. Between three and four kilometers deep, scientists have discovered a critical weak zone in the Earth's crust, a fractured layer where hot fluids and gases can accumulate under immense pressure. This is Bradyism, the slow breathing of the Earth. And right now, Campi Flegre is inhaling. The consequences aren't abstract. In the harbor of Pozzuoli, Boats that once floated freely now sit stranded on newly emerged land. The ancient Roman market, the Mesalem of Pozzuoli, its marble columns, bear bore holes from marine mollusks halfway up their shafts, proof they once stood submerged beneath the sea. Today, those columns stand fully exposed on dry ground, monuments to a caldera that simply will not stay still. In November 2025, Italy's Civil Protection Department conducted a national evacuation drill called Exercise Campi Flegre 2025. 
Over 120 students and teachers boarded buses in Naples, simulating the evacuation route they'd need to take. If the volcano reached a red alert level, moved through three designated waiting areas, then gathered at the port of Naples, where ferries would theoretically transport evacuees to regions like Sardinia and Sicily under Italy's twinning program. On paper, the plan appears thorough. In reality, critical questions remain unanswered. How do you evacuate 500,000 people through narrow streets? When buildings are collapsing and roads are buckling from earthquakes, where do all the buses come from? Who coordinates thousands of private vehicles fleeing in panic? And most troubling of all, who decides when to give the evacuation order and based on what triggers? Civil Protection Minister Nelo Musumasi has repeatedly stated that citizens don't need to leave, that the government will reinforce buildings and manage risks through structural improvements. Scientists warn that the system is under increasing stress and residents are left caught in the middle, unsure whether to trust official reassurances or pack their bags. Eugenio Coxia, president of Italy's major risks commission, described the current situation bluntly in November. We are in a yellow warning phase, indicating weak or moderate imbalance. What scientists do know is this, the ground is rising faster than it has in decades. Earthquakes are intensifying. Fumarole temperatures are climbing. Carbon dioxide emissions remain dangerously high. Mo, you. So what should you do if you live in the red zone? Monitor iNaive bulletins weekly. Keep emergency supplies ready, water, food, flashlights, battery-powered radios. Know your evacuation routes and meeting points. For those watching from outside Italy, Campi Flegre serves as a stark reminder. Over half a million people live directly above one of Europe's most dangerous volcanoes, and despite constant monitoring the heat is already invading homes. The earthquakes are already cracking walls. The uplift is already stranding boats on dry land. And the question isn't whether this volcano will cause more damage. The question is how much and how soon. If you want to stay updated on Campi Flegre's escalating activity and the latest monitoring data, subscribe to this channel. Because this story is far from over.